to the Ross Patterson Revolution. Brought to you by GhostBed.com. James, uh, who, James? What? Man, I'll tell you what, I am, I, I'm near death. I feel near death. So if you hear a twinge in my voice, it sounds like, hey, man, Ross, you sound like shit. Pro- I'm probably dying. I probably have fucking pneumonia. Ugh, Pretty convinced of that, by the way. Died on air. It'd be great. Great for the show. I know. It's like that free solo documentary. Yes. They wanted him to fall and die so so bad. bad. So did I. Is it weird that when I watched that, I did too? And I thought that was going to be the ending of that movie. Yeah, I did too. And he was so nihilistic about life anyways that I was like, he doesn't care. He He doesn't doesn't care if he dies. No. So, you know. Yeah. Uh, I felt felt the same thing. And when I watched that, because it was... it deserved the Oscar, I thought, by the way, because just because simply, hey, man, th- there was a chance that he was going to die every se- single second of that movie. Yeah. And they d- they did a they did a good job. They did a great job. They did a good job. I was like, like I said, I do not recommend smoking as much weed as I did before I watched. it. Ah, I actually yeah. do, because that's going to amp up the anticipation. But of you're afraid of heights. No, I am. And, and so I watched a little bit of it. You I think you would have freaked out. Here's what happened to me. Um, and it's happening to me now, so forgive me at home if you're subscribed on YouTube. I'm sweating a little bit. Again, near death. Right. If you see a little glistening on me. That's why. That's what happened when I watched that movie. My palms. You started sweating? A dead serious. My palms. I watched about. So I caught. Before it went to whatever outlet you watched it on, because you were watching it on streaming something uh, the other night. Yeah, and I can never. Hulu, maybe? Yeah, wh- whatever it was, right? Because there's 900 apps. <laughs> I caught it on, I-, I believe it was Discovery Channel did a one night premiere of it after okay. it left theaters, and I caught like 15 minutes of it. No lie. Palm sweaty. Uh, Eminem, Mom Spaghetti, the whole shit for me. Watching that guy for 15 minutes, and I was like, oh my God. I, I finally just switched it over to something else, and Had I was to. like, I want to sit down, watch this as a whole, because I knew I was going to walk away at some point to go do whatever right. it is I do. And, and you didn't want to miss the death. <clears throat> yes. And I was like, oh, I thought it was going to end. Oh, wait, you're telling me it doesn't end like that, obviously. The well, he- the guy was on stage at the Oscars. This is all dumb. I'm Don't all, you I'll, think you would have heard that I'm the guy up on medication died? Right? I'm hopped up no, on meds No, he did today. not die. Uh, he got on stage and accepted the yeah, Oscar. Yeah, I'm yeah. hopped up on meds. I thought it was going to, the way it was playing out was going to end like the bear guy, where it was just like, well, bear fucking ate him, dude. Oh, Grizzly Man. Mm-hmm. That's in my top 10. Top, big, I would put fan. Grizzly Man in top five Docs? Uh, documentaries. Mm. Oh, with that, with that, who's the voice? Her, her, but, but, you nah. know what I'm saying? No. Herzog. Oh, yeah. Werner, well, uh, yeah, whatever. Werner Her- Herzog. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's that great. That voice Ugh. with that weirdo. Knocked it out of the park on that one. Speaking of, oh, you showed me a video of this. Which one? The bear. Yeah, yeah, the bear attacking that, that lady in Russia yesterday. She fucking earned it. I mean, it's uh, going to happen. I, I don't think it was a lady. No, it was a dude. It was a, it was dude, a trainer. Yeah. Yeah, right, yeah. And it's going to happen, no? I think so. I think so. Um, what did you say? Let's make, it was, it a, let's, let's make it a death episode today. So I, want, oh, okay. I wanted that guy to die. You can't train a bear. Because here's, here's what happened. If you haven't seen this video, it's going viral today. Uh, we're recording on Friday. So this will air on Monday. Chances are you will have seen this video by the, the time the show airs. A fucking bear in Russia at a circus that was like under 200 people. That's the other thing you said was like, dude. Sir, there's just not a thing anymore, dude. I think it's just we know what goes on behind the scenes. Uh-huh. So a circus with like an animal that you know is in, you know, captivity every other second of the day. Yeah. I think we're done with that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we're so all done with there that. was, what'd you say, 200 if... It was a small crowd. Very, very tiny crowd. Uh, hey, our, one of our producer, Alex, is, is here, by the way. Jamie, if you could go, go and let Alec in. Let him, let him in. Um, there was a very small crowd, and the fucking bear was um, just pushing a wheelbarrow. Like, yeah, that was the trick. Why? That was the trick that you tortured this bear for. 
to and get them to push a wheelbarrow. Taking fi- pictures, they didn't say no flash photography. They didn't. They're just you deserved it. Yeah, yeah. That's all. It. I didn't feel bad. No, there was no twinge of like. Nope. Oh God! It was just like uh huh, uh huh. The whole time it's happening, like yeah, and yeah. then he probably dies. And yeah. then that's what should have happened. That's, that's what should have happened. Same and with Siegfried. The guy lived, though, by the way. And Roy, yeah. Yeah. This guy lived. The guy in Russia lived. Right. Uh, Sieg- Siegfried lived? I don't know if they both lived, too. It was just... Both um, lived. I think one of them died from something else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who knows? Who knows? Either way, I, I know why I'm going to die. This travel schedule has been brutal. Uh, there has been no let up in this game. Not that I'm complaining whatsoever. It's just it's the wrong time to be sick. Uh, so uh, on the way over here, feeling like shit, feeling like I'm going to die, hopped up on Dayquil. Sure. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, uh, there's just a, a, a tiny alert. Like I went to switch a song on my iPhone in my car, uh-huh. went to switch a song, and then I, I accidentally caught uh, like a weird flash of something, like kind of in between apps where I'm, I'm swiping and, you know. Sure. I'm driving, I shouldn't have been swiping like that, and it just said Jesus is risen, and I was like, uh, 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 uh. and you almost crashed, and you almost died. Almost crashed my car, almost died, but I was I was able to hit the Spotify button real quick, um, <laughs> right before you died. <laughs> right before I died, and uh. yeah, 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 yeah. And I'm like, oh, what was it? And it was it, the album is called <laughs> Jesus is King. Okay, would have been appropriate. Would have been appropriate oh, for a would, death scene. Because you always like to, speaking of death episodes, mm-hmm. you like to, when someone dies, go to their last Correct. thing. That would have been mine. So but we would have had to go through your cell phone and see what was the last thing he did. And it was like, pff, of course, that's what he died because of. Pressing that Spotify. I died for Kanye's sins is sure. what, what would have happened. Right. Um, for those of you who've been following along at home with the Kanye saga, with this fucking album. Is it coming out? Is it not? Is it real? Delayed for a month. Uh, again. Last night. So Kanye puts out a, a tweet yesterday that says it's coming out at midnight last night. Right. And you're like, heard this before, buddy. I'm up. I don't feel well. I've been sure. having trouble sleeping. And uh, I'm up. And I'm like, eh, I'll flick on a couple of songs. Whatever. I'm up. You know, pop some, pop some of those Raycons in those, those new headphones. Mm-hmm. No album. Fans are raging against the machine. No fucking album last night. And I'm like, yo, I just put the phone down and and finally went to sleep. And I was like, boy, we're going to rage on Kanye today. And then literally on the drive over, it pops up. Jesus is king. And I'm like, oh, my, oh my God. What, do you, what is that? Can you explain what happened at midnight between midnight and it popping up? Yes, I can. I can ac- absolutely explain this okay. uh, for the people at home. Um, or just me. He, well, for, for everyone, in case you don't know, he fucks with things until the last second. And the way that technology is now for albums, right? You can submit it just via email to your publisher. So he announced <clears throat> he's putting it out. Correct. And crazy ass fucking Kanye decides. So let's say that uh, he needs to tweak something. Yeah. Uh, let, let's say, and this is a hypothetical because I don't know what label he's Ooh. under. Uh, let's say it's, uh, I don't know, fucking capital, just to say it. I, I, again, I don't know what label he's under. There is probably a staff of eight waiting at Capitol all day long, all night long to get this album, put it up on all the platforms, and they can leave, go home, done with their day. They probably stayed up for 36 hours straight. Because the album didn't drop until noon today. Um, and I was like, it, fans raged last night. And they were like, fuck you. They did. I am done with waiting for this shit. Blah, blah, blah. As was I. I was completely prepared to rage against Kanye today. Mm-hmm. In the midst of my sickness. In the midst of me possibly dying. I was able to hit Spotify. And if you don't, I guess if you don't have the, the fucking thing for the month. Uh, whatever their cost is. Mm-hmm. It makes it go on shuffle, so you can't oh, listen okay, to it in order, okay. which is why I like Apple Music. But maybe I don't. You I, need I don't to like pay a premium right. or something. But it wasn't on Apple Music on the way over, mm-hmm. and I was like, "Oh fuck," because I tried it when I left the driveway. But it was on Spotify, so it makes you go to shuffle, so you don't know what song is popping up or whatever. Right? right. I just in, in the midst of it, where I was just like, "Well, this is the last thing I'm going to listen to before my car crashes and I die." Just press the goddamn shuffle button on on Spotify. 
a song called Salah, S-E-L-A-H, pops up, boom, I hit play. It was the most glorious fucking banger, banger of all time that I was like, well, that's out the window. If I wanted to hate you, I can't now. And also, I had it up at full max volume. Having a little trouble hearing out of this ear today, out of the the right guy. If that's the song I died to, because I think about that. I think about what song I would like to die to. Mm Would have been perfectly fine with that. I'm going to pop it on on the end of today's episode. It's super illegal. I I don't really give a shit. But uh, play this at a max level where you're just like, all right, yeah, fuck. If I died, that that'd be that'd be a, a fine song to go out to. Okay. I don't. The, it, so right before we walked in the studio, it had gone to the next song, which was I was halfway through another banger, and I was like, shit. We have a big guest coming in this afternoon for Drinking Bros. Could not sit and listen to the is rest of the album. Is it very gospelly? Oh, it is. Okay. One hundred percent gospel, but it is powerful. Remember sure. Jesus walks. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. that look again. I am one song in. So forgive me if by the time this airs. You guys are, are listening to this, and you're like, yo, the rest of the fucking album sucks. I don't know. I just sure. know this one song and, that, and a half of another one, Banger, where I'm like, holy shit. Holy shit. And if the rest of the album is like that, because he's trending. I'm looking at it. He's trending number one right now. This is going on live. We're taping it, you know, 1230 right now. This is going on live right now. Kenny G. Kenny G is on the fucking album. Oh, I feel like I heard that. I did too, but it, is that real? Because he I didn't played know if that was real. at um, somebody's birthday. Like Kim hired him for Kylie's something, and it was hilarious. <coughs> really? And she put it on her stories, and it was like, fucking Kenny G. <laughs> like, Man, every single thing trending on Twitter right now is Kanye and, and individual songs. Right. So I don't know. I, the one that I just quoted to you isn't, and to me it is a goddamn banger. And I'll tell you if, if, it's, if, it's, if it's not, right? Mm-hmm. I'll be the first one to tell you, like, hey, man, eh. Like his last album, I, I, I liked it, but it was very artistic. Right. I'm sure this is as well, if, if the whole thing is about Jesus. Yeah. And, and gospely. It is, but there is a way to make that shit slap. And we, one for one so far, I'll listen to the rest of it after this. But, uh, man, if he's able to do that, turn a gospel album into just a fucking whole thing of bangers like that. I, crazy. I, yeah. I caught part of his interview last night with Zane. Mm. You know his last name? <clears throat> Zane? No. I don't either. Uh, it's Zane from BBC, the bald guy. Kind of looks like Moby. And just does everybody. He's the Joe Rogan of musicians. He does every musician on the planet. He, he's interviewed Kanye, what, two or three times? Yeah. So his All those in- clips of... Like the memes of Kanye yeah. are in interviews with this guy because he just goes fucking off. Off. When he's with him. Right, yeah. off. Um, I caught part of the interview last night because they were releasing it in segments kind of to tease it out. I'm assuming it was to go with the album release because yeah. it was for Beats. Um, Zane Lowe. Zane Lowe. Uh, it, it, it was for Beats with, uh, with Apple, which is their new Got it. kind of video platform where it's like they drop a... Uh, uh, maybe a 45 to hour interview with the album as it comes out. Mm-hmm. They did it for Post Malone as well. And so they were dropping it in pieces last night where it was just like, oh, hey, we're not ready for this yet because the album's not out yet. And the interview was cra- he, crazy. He was, he was like, look, man, I am done with the rest of the shit. I'm a son of Christ now and all this other stuff. And I was like, oh, boy. Well. Oh, boy. Like if you wrote a movie about somebody, like a, a huge rock star or rapper or whatever, mm-hmm. over time... Dewey Cox style, Darnell Dawkins, Mouth Guitar Legend style, sure. losing their mind towards the end. This that interview to me was like, well, that's it. This album's gonna fucking suck. And because it seemed like he lost his mind. Yes, not lost his mind, but you know when uh, like you ever see a celebrity where they've gotten too famous and they're out of touch and they like think just they, they on can't relate to planet. anyone normal. Yes. It's, their experiences are yep. not universal and they're talking like, oh, yeah, everybody knows that yeah. you do this. And that like, that no. is exactly what I sure. saw when I saw this interview when I was just like, whoa, he is. That's it. That Indian has left the reservation. Sure. And I don't know what this album is going to be. And good luck. Uh, he announced another one last night that was going to drop on Christmas Day. Another album about Christ. So you can expect that. 
two years from now? Probably. Or three? Yeah, 2023. Okay. 2023. Okay. But, uh, man, powerful. Powerful I wonder so if there far. was something to the, to, to the not dropping it. Ah, Salah has now entered. Has now entered the Twitter feed. Mm. Uh, trending. So, all right, Ross. Yeah, still got it. Still got it. Big still, guys still got it. Still a purveyor of taste. Good Oof. for you. Good Man, for you. Either way, this is going to be the talk of the weekend, obviously. Um, because there's not another album coming out for like this for a while. The rumor is, uh, so well, not the rumor. Coldplay's got an album coming out in November. I realize people at home, you don't have to fucking write me. I'm the only person that apparently likes Coldplay. Quintessential. Fi- I'm fine with admitting it. Fine with admitting it. Quintessential Coldplay. We I played. Think- we played the two yeah. songs off the Last Night's album. Yeah, I but, think we're good on Coldplay. No, I'm not. I, oh, I, I okay, still okay, enjoy okay. them. I think I'm good. I've had I've had a lot of fun with them and yeah. a lot of fun at their concerts. Uh-huh. Just a lot of joy and happiness and love, right? Yes, yes, yes. yes. But I think I'm good. You know, I don't it's, know. It's very positive. It's very positive. It, very, and it really is. And I played you that song, and I'd listened to it before I played it for you, and I was like, I know exactly what we're going to say before you hear the new song, because that came out last night. Right. And uh, Quintessence Coldplay. <laughs> is that, that's very anthem. Quintessence. Oh, very, very anthem, very whoa, whoa, very back and forth and catchy, yeah. and I'm sure at some point it will be caught in my head. You know what I mean? Like, at some point after I hear it a couple times, it'll be like... I'll sing it. You can You'll already see it on some kids thing. I was gonna say you can already commercial. picture a, like a stadium in Brazil of 110,000 people just shaking lit bracelets, yeah. singing. Oh, oh, oh. I, I, it's I like it. It's very happy and upbeat. Uh, they're very, it's very on brand, mm-hmm. very on brand for Coldplay. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it, but Adele is the other one, right? So Adele, there's a rumor that this is coming out. November ish, mm-hmm. right around the holidays, which is the biggest time for books, biggest time for records. Uh, so it, it makes sense. What I've heard, and I think we've talked about this, was the divorce is kind of holding up the album. Oh, yeah, because she doesn't want to give him any of the money. Mm. I don't know what's going on it's with her. Be hard, yeah. But we saw a picture of her yesterday at Drake's birthday. She flew into Toronto to go to Drake's birthday because apparently they're great friends. Yeah, she's just fucking cool like that, I think. I think she's fucking friends with everybody. I think she wants to fucking date Drake. I've heard her interviews. She loves Drake. Oh, yeah, yeah. In a serious way, I'm not sure. Yes, but like, in yeah. a serious way. I, I honestly believe that. That's not the most shocking part. The most shocking part was it appears as if she's lost somewhere between 80 and 100 pounds. Yeah, she's, a, she's thin. Adele's thin. I don't know how I feel about it. I don't either. I first came on the scene with Adele during One Tree Hill. She did a song during One Tree Hill, and I heard it in the background. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yo, what is this? I got to find it. And then, boom. Um, <clears throat> uh, no, somebody had sent me it before that. And then I listened to it, and it was great. And then I heard the song on One Tree Hill, and I was like, oh, my God, that's that, that's that band that somebody sent me. Mm-hmm. Um, either way, if you go back to what year was that probably? Probably looking at uh, 2010, somewhere in there. If you go back and look at her pictures in 2010 to now, because she got a little thinner over the years. Yeah, yeah. Go back to 2010, man. No, I know. It was, it was almost toward, who's the girl that just hopped out of bed and then got on that show and won everything? Susan Boyle. She was She's near the- Boyle territory. And you're like, oh, okay. <laughs> no, I think she was... Boyle wasn't big, that big. Adele was a large. A and the first time I saw her, I, I told you it was a one hour concert where she just drank beer and just, it was her and a microphone. That was yeah. it. And uh, like some form of backup band. She was just drinking beers on stage and you're just like, didn't move, didn't dance, didn't move, just sat, stood behind a microphone. You were like, yeah. oh shit. Um, now, I, I mean, after those photos came out, I was just like, Holy shit. She always had a really pretty face. Yes. Yeah. Now you're like, oh, f- fuck. All right, Adele. Yeah. What if she ends up with Drake? Uh, and they make an album together. 
I don't know if Drake likes ladies. Does he? Yeah. Yeah, he does. Oh, okay. He's got a kid. He knocked up that porn star in France. Yeah. 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 The, 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 Rihanna, the Rihanna thing fucked him up. Oh, okay. That was... That was his end all be all, and then something happened. They're along leaking, the way. linking him with Kylie Jenner too. Why not? I say go point, for it. Yeah, yeah. I say go for it. That's a fucking great power couple, right? Oh, dude, you, are you kidding me? There we go. Now we're well, talking. Well, you Drake. always, yeah, you always suggest you that. I do. Any guy mm-hmm. hook up with the Kardashian and hold can. on for dear, dear life. life. Yeah. Uh, Drake, I will say I don't this. Know if Drake is dark enough for those gals. Yeah, he's fine. He's fine. She dated, I think, Blake Griffin. He was light skinned. Oh, that's too. right. So that's right. You're good to that go was with Kendall, that. not Kylie, by the way. Whatever. I get the two of them mixed up. I don't really know what the sitch Kylie's is. Kylie's the one that's with the rappers and ah, has the kids with the rappers. Yeah. Rapper well, she's, after got, she's got one kid. Yeah. So does Drake, though. So yeah. you're good to go. Yeah. Um. Wow. Fuck, man. Uh, Drake and, and and the and the I Jenner. I think it'd be great. I think Ooh, it'd be great. I'd be a uh, because he's uh, no oh, shit. Him and Kanye are in that fight. Oh, I wonder how that that whoopsie Daisy. Maybe it's a little bit of a. How's Thanksgiving gonna go? Mm. Is it gonna be in Wyoming? Probably. 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 Did Oof. you see any of that ranch? I did. It looked amazing. I wanted to do it. You're going to join the cult. I knew you fucking would, dude. So I didn't want you to see the ranch. Let me give you the let me give you the backstory on this. Uh, one of my beef fries, one of my best friends, uh, Bert Kuntz. I'm actually wearing his hat today. He owns a company called Bison Union. Um, so if you're watching this, uh, Bert and, and Candace, um, love your company. I love all their products there. I, we wear them all the time. It's some of the best apparel for men in the business. Uh, for real. And Bert... One day, just up and moved to Wyoming, moved the entire company, everything to Wyoming and just said, you know what, man, I am unhappy in this city fucking grind, rat race, whatever. I have my own company. Right. We ship clothes. It's clothes, hats, whatever. Do it from wherever. Do it for wh- wherever I want to personally be happy. And then if I miss the city, I can go out and travel and, and, uh, and kind of regroup and then get back into it, right? He did, and, and genuinely. Um, I had dinner with him March March or April last time. It's been a while, but I had dinner with him. And at that point, he'd been living there for close to like six months, eight months, somewhere in there. And I was like, how is it, man? Is this cabin? You've seen it. You've seen the Instagram photos. Oh, yeah. Photos. It's a luxury cabin. It is picturesque. He owns, I don't know. 15, 20 acres up there, but it was cheap as fuck. And he right. was, I actually, he was on a, on Drinking Bros podcast and he, he did an interview about it and he goes, hey man, if you think you can't do this in real life of what I'm doing, I think he said the entire place, which you've seen, you just said it was a luxury cabin, right? I agree with that. Mm-hmm. He was the one on air was just like, hey man, it was like $350,000 for like 15 acres and this luxury cabin and it's, it's on a river. Right. Um, I mean, it's amazing. And he goes, you can afford this. If you think you can't, you actually can. Mm-hmm. And I was like, ah, all right. But but part of me was looking at his Instagram every day and it seemed to snow a lot and whatever. And I was like, can you really get sick of that much beauty? You know? Yeah. Is it a West Bentley American beauty thing of like bag in the wind? Mm-hmm. Can you ever get tired of, of so much beauty in the world? Well, I don't know. You tell me. I don't know. And I don't know the answer because I've never lived out in that type of environment before. But you live with me. I do live with you. So can you get tired of that much beauty? Or oh, is it oh, oh! For you mean fi- like a physical human? Just I'm looking talking about at so much beauty. Just talking in about your nature. Life and, oh, yes, talking about nature this time, not not physical. Jesse, you are picturesque every day. Yeah, yeah. And you don't ever get tired of that, <clears throat> no, right? No, never get tired of that. Um, but physical like walk out the door like holy shit I'm, i feel like i'm in a norman rockwell painting or ansel adams picture eh. i think i would but i know there's probably a lot of people that would love that every single day but i need to walk out into i need to see a building i need to see some some people walking around i need to just to, just sometimes sure i wonder um because the way his setup is is his <coughs> pardon me um, his t-shirt company, 
uh, clothing company, but they do boots and everything else, is in town. So he does drive into a town every day. Right. Um, I'm not going to say which one it is. Uh, actually, I think it's Jackson. Mm. Fuck it. I don't know. Um, <laughs> Either way, he again, drives into a town. Good for Near person. death. Yeah, 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 um, yeah, I could be yeah. talking about uh, like my grandmother's seance here in a minute um, off the rails. But uh, he drives into a town every day. So therefore, he does go to work every mm. day. Um, and then he goes back to the cabin. Like It's a small town. Very, mm-hmm. very small town. Mm-hmm. He opened up a coffee shop there uh, with Black Rifle Coffee as well. And so he's got the, 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 his clothing company and the coffee company there. So he does go into work every day. And then he goes back to the ranch. I don't know. I don't know what the right answer is. I asked, uh, we had a guest on Dan Cummins, who's got a great podcast called Time Suck, um, good friend of mine. And w- when he was on the show, I asked him this, because he moved to Court de Leon, mm. uh, Idaho, mm. which is the same. Everybody's like, it's the most beautiful place in the world. Yeah. And I go, man, are you ever sick of it? And he goes, well, I do get to travel for live shows and everything like that. He goes, but no, it is the most beautiful place on the planet. Right. So I don't know. I don't, I don't know, but uh, it's starting to look more and more appealing. When I was watching that Kanye interview last night, you knew I was going to go down there, didn't you? I just thought, you know, as soon as you see it, as soon as you hear him, I was like, he'd be very, it, we might need to keep you from joining the cult that he is starting. And he is starting it. I'm not, look, I, I'm not you're joining not a, any cult or anything like you're that. You're not into group think? I'm in you're a not group, a real group think guy? I'm in the group think. I am. Um, it depends on who the people are. You're into groupthink? No, you aren't. What, what do you mean? I think you're mistaken. Tell me what your definition of groupthink is. Um, like, uh, let's see, like a religion, like all these people just believing in one thing without really thinking for themselves. No, so no, no. Groupthink no. is I- more like the dangers of a cult is groupthink. So... Let me look at the actual definition here. Okay. The practice of thinking or making decisions as a group in a way that discourages creativity or individual responsibility. No, then I'm not. Okay. Um, (laughs) (laughs) I'm into groupthink, man. I think it's fucking cool. I'm like, oh boy, come back. Again. Come back. Don't go to the cult. Near death. You're like, wait. Could say anything today. Save Dude, this episode. If Kanye came today, oh, he could be get all in. you. He could get me. I'd be he all in. He could say you into group thinking. You're like, yeah. Yes, let's do it. I like it. Give me a fucking beanie. Let's go out to the middle of the forest. Right. Give me a fisherman's beanie. You're like, I saw your ranch. I'll go. I'll do whatever you need me to do. <coughs> no, I'm into. Uh, um, I, You're into, I'm into trends. No, not trends. I, I'm into groups getting together for creativity. The, I guess the opposite. What do you call that then? Um, Oh, fuck, man. I've worked in a ton of writers' rooms where it's like a bunch of writers get together and you pitch shit all day. Yeah, and but that's you fun. get to what do you pitch call that? stuff. Yeah. It's uh, just a creative, you know. Think tank. There we go. Think tank. Thank you, Jamie. I was, we were close. I had half of the word there. I had half of the phrase. Instead of group think, think tank. That's what I'm into. Um, I'm into that sort of thing, but uh, no, I don't, I'm not a follower of things of like, oh, hey, we're going to do this blindly, today. that's the deal. Put on the clothes and do the thing. No, I'm not into that. But I am into group thinks where... You all kind of, kind of sit there and, and Groups, come up. Think tank. Think tank. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God damn it, man! I this is it today. This is the last I think it's show. Fun. Play Salah at the end I of this. I think it's kind of. We're fun. We're gonna play that song at the end of this, and then when I die, at least you'll be like, oh shit. So you're into think tanks? Yeah, I mean that makes sense. Think tanks are quite productive, and into they're a good way to big into think tanks. Sure, and that's cool. And Nobody's actually against. I don't know anyone that's against a, gr- uh, a think tank. I, I do. So in these writer ro- these writers' rooms that were think tanks, there was writers who got up and left who were just like, I fucking hate all your ideas, and I think you're stupid, and I'm leaving the room. And I was like, oh, shit. And that's the a very good distinction between groupthink and think tank is someone can get up and be like, fuck all you guys, I'm out of here. Yes. Whereas a group think, you're like, you'll get either beaten or you'll, you know. Yeah. So. Um, and I know, <coughs> look, it, it depends on who it is. I, two, two writers walked out of the last one I was in, and uh, they were just like, oh, all right, cool. You. No, no, no. Oh. Um, just because of the. I was just wondering. I'm, I'm, I'm good in those. Like, oh, okay. I'll listen to anybody's shit and try to pretend, you know, play along with it and be mm-hmm. like, oh, yeah, that, that's possible. Right. Um, even last night, somebody. 
hit me up and was just like, hey, man, uh, I was listening to your, your Jeffrey Epstein episode. You know, there was a picture they found of him from overhead on this drone on his own island, and it was a lookalike, and the, you know, he uh, got out of the, the thing, and they faked his suicide or whatever, and he goes, what do you think about this? Oh God. And I go, I just wrote back, and I said, eh, I'm willing to entertain it. I'm sure. gonna, I don't want to shit on his dreams. You know? Sure. Look, anything's possible. Yes. I don't know why we're not talking about Epstein anymore, but... Um, no one is. We just aren't. Uh, same he with died Harvey that's, that's over. Weinstein. He showed up Oof. at this actor's event. I was So I was up last night when this happened, and okay. I, I caught it. Okay, and did you it. see the videos yes. of the people yelling at him and stuff? What is this? So The people that yelled at him and were like, dude, I feel uncomfortable that you're fucking here, uh-huh. they get kicked out. Yes. Weinstein stays. Yep. What is he doing? What's going on? Is he like trying to live a normal life? Is he trying to have a comeback? Like he was talking to people about funding projects, uh-huh. which is why a lot of them were cool with him being there. Yes. Um, he is. Yes. He's plotting his comeback. He's going to get off on this trial. I'm telling you right now. I've said this for a year. Um, I know who the key witness is. I know what they're going to go after. And they're down to essentially this one woman because the others, the others have kind of fallen off, right? Are we uh, down to the crazy girl yes. that they're going to just uh, dude, tear apart? And it's a shame, I will it's, say. It's, he's going to get it's out of shame. this, I believe. Um, and I think he is plotting his comeback. Really do. So like last night he went out in New York City and was just like, yeah, let's go to a fucking comedy club. Yeah, so it was this... Um, it was hosted by Actors Hour, and it was a it was a downtime bar in New York City, and it was sort of the speakeasy situation, and it was a bunch of actors, act you know, artists, and he's just there. Yeah, with a bunch out. of ladies. And so a bunch of ladies, young and, women, um, female comedians. So they're getting on stage and being like, uh, so one of them. Not a lot of people said anything, actually. The stuckless girl uh, said something, and one of the... The comedian, yeah. Her last name is Stuckless, yes. Uh, Kelly Bachman is the uh, comedian. Stuckless is actually a some kind of producer of some kind. Okay. Um, but the Bachman girl was... Kelly Bach- Bachman uh, was the comedian that was saying stuff like the elephant in the room, and he's Freddy Krueger, and... You know, but people <coughs> in the audience were booing her yep. and telling her to shut up. Yeah. Wow. Have we yeah. come full circle? I mean, are we now defending Weinstein in actors' uh, events? Here's what my theory is on, on watching this last night because it was fucking awful. And it is a it non a small. It's a non story today f- for whatever reason. Like they didn't talk about it on the Today Show this morning. It is not trending. Nothing. I don't. I don't even see it on most of the major media outlets. And you were up, which is why I you was saw up. it. But other than that, because I, I caught it live, and uh, people were posting cell phone videos of it happening, and I was just like, "Oh, wait, what?" I, I thought. And this Ronan guy is doing Pharaoh or whatever who wrote the catch and kill right. about all of this and broke Which all is of out this. this Everything is yeah. now getting some pushback in interviews where people are kind of making it seem or asking questions that are like, why is he wanting to be the face like face of this uh-huh. and gearing it, you know, shifting it more towards him, his motives. Also, and whereas also, before they wouldn't even ask that. Que- I mean, it would be off limits I'll to tell you even why. ask him. I'll tell you why, what his be. motives are. In the case of Ronan Farrow, the last three or four people he's tried to out. You know, because he's one of those gotcha people, like gotcha. Right. Um, it has been incorrect, and people have questioned it. And the New York Times said, "I'm not going to publish this because I cannot confirm your sources." Right. And he goes, so you're going to have to find some place else to do that, man, because I've talked to these people and so they're not saying kind what, of what you're saying. riding that wave. And I think this catch and kill book actually came out it did. at the bottom, whereas it should have, this uh, book should have come out, I would say probably seven, eight months ago. It should have, yes. Would have been fine. Yeah. Now, I think you're on like the, the end of a wave. 
So I, I pulled up the numbers. And it came out at the wrong time. Publishers Weekly today. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because these are the actual numbers, not the, the New York Times bestseller sure. New York numbers. Times is not a bestselling list. Yeah. And we all know that. Um, uh, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull this up. Uh, Elton John came in at number one. And I've told you guys this before. Like the heavy hitters come out around end of October. I don't, we didn't want to get involved in this with our books, right? No, that's, we that's tried, too much. You, know, you, you guys tried to time it. Accordingly. Yes. And, and thank God we did, because I'm looking at these numbers right now. Elton John was number one, uh, his, his biography. Uh, 71,000 hardbacks sold. That's a big boy number. Holy shit. That's a big boy number, but he's- In the first week? First week. Oh, my God. He is a big That's boy. crazy. Knowing big what we musician. know. No, I know, I know. Uh, that, th- but these are the- If you enter these months yeah. as an author, these are the numbers you'd expect to go against, right? Sure. Um, Number two, I really needed this today. Words to live by. Hoda. I told you that. It's just a book of quotes. That's it, right? Just yeah. quotes. Her favorite quotes. I think You're- she writes some expert excerpts in there, but it is really just a book of other people's. Are words. you re- are you ready for her number? Please. Fifty five thousand hardbacks sold. It's a lot. That is fucking huge for a book of quotes. That's a lot. Because there's a lot of book of quotes out there. But uh, to put that in perspective, I, I think a publisher gets usually make about 10 bucks off a of hardback. Just off the hardback alone, first week mm-hmm. opening numbers, $550,000 for the publisher. Who is the publisher? Oh, GP Putnam's and Sons. Eh, shit. Shit. Uh, number three, Catch and Kill. So. He came in at three, and he sold, look, this is respectable, so I'm not going to shit on it. Sure. 44,000 hardback copies. Not bad. He should have pushed that up. If he would have, so, if he would have released it last week, that would have been number one. Mm -hmm. He shouldn't have gone up against Sir Elton John. Probably. No. Or Hoda, to be completely honest with you. No. Hoda's a fucking powerhouse. No. Uh, And I did find out the all-time record, by the way. Of what? First week? First week. What was it? Michelle Obama. Oh, Hardback, yeah. seven. You ready for this number? 783,000 hardback copies first week. That is Bible numbers. <gasps> that is if you run, you win numbers. Yes, it is. Wow. That, this is why Democrats are so far up her ass of like please run please. you will win she wouldn't bro not in a million years that is you were out God. selling you're out selling the bible i mean I, that is i i didn't know it was that many i did not know wow yeah um um but yeah a, a week earlier his whole shit man i again if that's what you make your career off of is gotcha moments like to me you're kind of like a james o'keefe like the veritas guy you know, who's secretly recording people and all that other shit. And yeah. it's like the first few that he did that got out into the open. I was like, oh, wow, that's pretty provocative. Because and then can, after that, you were like, eh, you're I know, because to- you can argue that, you know, thankfully, he outed some of the people that he did, right? Yeah. Um, I just think he he's unlikable. And I think he he had too Correct. many misses. Yep. Um. And he just tried to ride the wave in the wrong way, I think. Yeah, and he, you know, he had a talk show before this. Oh. Um, bombed. I'm sure. And they, He's a weirdo. Uh, yeah, they had to get him out of there. Sure. Uh, and then he started this whole campaign this shit. Whole and campaign he actually won a Pulitzer Prize, I believe, for uh, uh, Look, his first I mean, story in the New Yorker. He was getting... <laughs> I mean, if Harvey Weinstein could have gotten away with killing him... He all but did, right? Yeah. So he, they came after these people in a way that if you continue with the story, I think you are doing a service, you know, at that point, at mm-hmm. that point. And now with this book and like I said, he's getting some pushback in interviews on certain outlets like, right, Gail King is like, what is up with you? Really? <laughs> yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Well, she's just, you know, she was just asking questions, like I said, that no one would have asked a year ago, let's say. Mm. You wouldn't be allowed to. No. You can't even. Like, that's yeah. the thing. I think that's the difference between now and then, right? Is that we can at least ask. Mm-hmm. Or with Weinstein, I think this whole thing, what they're taking from it, 
what the media is taking from it is he his he is not convicted in the court of law and we are convicting him in public opinion which you know yeah i think that's the only unfortunately the only way that he's going to actually get convicted yeah. right and there is a lot of people rich people that get off that beat charges yeah. where they actually did something oj <clears throat> yeah cosby the first time so it's like you know i think i tell you we're close to getting oj on the show when fuck i didn't tell you this story this feels like a very like personal conversation <laughs> uh, again whatever the meds man I, who, who you're knows? just like talking last to me like we're on, in the, uh, the kitchen table last show ever so who, yeah no uh, you me, i know he's gonna die so um, I, let's so just we, we say gotta, all we, the things you want to say yeah let's do it let's actually do it so we talked to his son um we talked to justin and uh he was like look you can ask me anything i guess his son's got a podcast starting or, or it's out he was like, it's Look, a paywall though, so oh, it is. You won't uh, find it on. That's fine. I don't um, think OJ's is paywall anyway. Well, Go ahead. so that's that's where I'm going with this. Um, Justin was like, "Hey man, we can swap and do the show and do everything. The only thing that is off limits." And I thought he was going to say his dad. It was like, "No, you can't ask me about my mom." And I was like, "All right, shit, we're down." Um, so I, I think that's probably going to happen. And then we got in touch with who's his mom though. We got in touch with OJ. Hmm. Um, and. They said, hey, he'll do the show, but um, wait, we want to wait until OJ's podcast starts. And I was like, whoa, OJ's got a podcast? Whew, I did not know that. Did you know this? Yeah, we talked about it, but it's going to be behind a paywall, I told you. So it, will not, it will not be on yeah, iTunes yeah, in yeah. the same free way. Maybe Luke. I don't know who signed a deal with him, but it's going to be a, a pay. So it was a friend of a friend, and we said, hey, can you... Hey, can you give us proof? She was like, yeah, I'm with him right now. She snapped a picture and was just like, holy shit. Sent it, sent it to Dan and I, and I was just like, whoa, you fucking OJ on the show? Are we crossing the line at that point? I don't really know. Well, you know I won't be on the no, show. No, you won't be. Um, blonde, white girl, you won't be on the show. He, he's no, I've told you many times I still looking for the real not. killers, though, right? <laughs> I will not even be close to the office. You know what a beautiful segue from OJ Simpson is? Into ghostbed.com oh, forward slash drinking bros. Oh, perfect, and they love it. Don't they love Every it? Every single time they love they love these reads. Uh, look, I'm going to, uh, I could be propped up in one. I, th this could be my r final resting place. In a ghost bed from ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. Pay as you go program. There, that's the biggie. That's what everybody's talking about. 36 months. Uh, no interest. And... It's like 38 bucks a month for that shit. Mattresses, pillows, the Halloween deals are off the fucking chain right now. Off the Halloween chain. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Ooh. Off the Halloween chain. Off I'm decorating chain. today. Are you? This is Halloween. This, this is, is Halloween. Halloween. <laughs> uh, go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros today. Get yourself a mattress, man. I want to look up these. If you're military first responder, you get 15% off forever. And that's uh, everything in the store, which is amazing. Um, I'm going to look up the, the Halloween deals because we're right here now. We're, on, we're right on top of it. Um, we could be, they could be giving away fucking dead bodies with it. Um, ooh. Ooh. You could are you be giving me? away dead bodies with it? Actual ghosts, you know? They could be giving away uh, pictures of Patrick Swayze and Demi Moore inside all of your ghost bed boxes. Because it gets shipped to your house in a box, and then you pop it up, and it's like you know what they should a hologram. send. What if it's yeah, a hologram of them? they should send a pottery wheel with their beds. Speaking of wheels, that that is their thing. So if you go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros today, I'm right I'm right here on it now. It is a it's a fucking party wheel. So you press the spin button oh, in yes, the middle. Yes, yes, yes. That's a fun thing. Here's the options: free shipping, uh, up to two hundred dollars off a mattress, up to nine hundred ninety nine dollars off a bundle package. What? That is. That is, that's a lot. It's like, Jesus Christ, man. Three, four, four soft, a goddamn thing. Um, yeah, uh, that's, that's, that's a lot going on there at Ghostbed. They weren't lying. I was not expecting that. $1,000 off a bundle package. That shit's expensive, man. Uh, go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros today. Get on you, Ghostbed. They're always popping the deals off. 
right? Yeah. Nine ninety nine off a bundle package? What are you making? Eight dollars then? How are they making? I don't know. I'm looking at it right now. It, I I thought I'm tripping. Is it Halloween? They're just not gonna make any money. Maybe. Oh, cool. Sleep so good it's scary. Good for them though. Shit, that's amazing. They like to like the spookiness of not being able to pay bills. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. This this <laughs> spookiness like of the creepiness of it. The creepiness of it. They're like. Our family will go hungry For, so forever. that you can get. And that's just the kind of people that they are. Hell Do you yeah, know what yeah. I mean? Our family will be on the streets so that you can have a bed. So that you can keep going in your life. Good uh, for them. I love it. Next up, we got StrikeForceEnergy.com. Jabes. Boom, 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 boom. Four amazing flavors. Uh, I, I put a little in this. Again, I'm drinking this kombucha. I'd put a little more if I were you. Probably. Yeah. Probably. Load it up, dude. Load it up. Four amazing flavors. Grape, ridge, lemon. <laughs> and then there's another flavor that I'm blanking on right now. Um, Grape. Again, riders on the Grape, storm. Grape, lemon, orange, ridge. <laughs> Last show ever. No, there's something else, right? There's four flavors. Lemon, orange, grape, a ridge. There we go. There we go. 10 pack, 40 pack, 750 milliliter bottle. Um, whew. Daddy is having a hard time. 10 pack. Eesh, dude. 40 pack, 750 milliliter bottle. Eesh. Uh, go to strikeforceenergy.com. Promo code Drinking Bros, 20% off. They ship everywhere in the entire world. No carbs, no sugars. Pop it in the white claw for Halloween if you're taking your kids out. Taking your kids out. Um, what are you going to be? Do you know? Uh, me? Mm hmm. Yeah, I do. You do? I do. I, uh, I know what I'm going to be. Are you going to be a bottle of Strike Force? Yeah. For how <laughs> <laughs> Just put one of these on this the head. Right here. Yeah. Just, yep. <laughs> you're going to put a white. A Strike Force unicorn. Mm-hmm. If you're watching the show on, on YouTube, boom. There it is. Bam, ba down, bam, bam. Bam, ba bam, bam, bam. Uh, last <laughs> but not least, we got straightrazors.com. Uh. James is what they came for. Give it to him. Give it to the people. Ooh, that's a clean cut. Smooth. Oh, you like it? Man, I'm wearing headphones today because I can't, oh. I can't, uh, I can't hear that well. Why didn't you my... take them off? It didn't matter. Uh, I've only got one ear today. I can hear it on my left. Can't oh, hear it on my right. Oh boy! No, I can't well, hear it out of either. Now you're shave up. Uh, <laughs> shave your pumpkins He's like talking for Halloween. Louder. Because you can't hear anything. Shave your pumpkins for <laughs> Halloween. Shave those pumpkins. Carve them. Carve them up with a straight razor. Uh, works even better. You can you can make a fucking sick ass jack o' lantern with a straight razor. Um, and just throw some some lube on there. Throw some uh, Vaseline on that that pumpkin. Shave it up. Uh, they get uh, products for men and uh, look transgenders too. I guess if you're if you're pre-op, you know, before you switch over to a lady, because it's, it's not a ladies' company, obviously, but uh, if you're pre-op Straight thinking about razors? switching over, yeah. Um, no, it's not exactly for ladies. I will say this, ladies. We have so many products yeah. that are shoved in our face Yep. Um, on a daily basis. It's Guys don't actually have that much. You like it more simple, easier, right? Yeah. So... Here's everything that you guys need from top to taint, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hair, sh- mustache, chin to, chin to taint, beard, smelling good. Yeah. yeah. Skull to taint. I think um, we should go because a lot the, of people, and, bald people shave with it. Yeah, and I would put the beard oil on your pubes, just saying. Yep. Relaxes if you want, them. Relaxes them, straightens them mm-hmm. out. And nothing like a nice. And then it's just a curtain. A of, nice uh, Eric Clapton of long, from Cream. Straight. Cubes, Hair. yeah, just going around the ding. And the ladies like that, right? Ladies love it. A natural merkin. Yeah, natural merk. Yeah. Um. Not a tube merk. A, a nat- like a merk. lot of people have to do. Yeah. Have to put that fake merk on there. A Natalie merkant. Um. Mm-hmm. Nope. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, I go to straightrazors.com. Promo code Revolution twenty percent off. I'm getting flooded now. I'm gonna answer your question here, Matthew Gillespie. I'm ready for the. I'm getting flooded. I'm I'm getting ready for G, uh, Saint James Street James. That's my Twitter and uh, Instagram handle. Review of Jesus is King. That is all I'm. Oh, Everybody's okay. just like, just okay. I've got to hear okay. this review. That means everybody else is listening to this right now, just being like, yo, 
either what the fuck is this or this is the greatest thing ever please give me your stance on it i will next week if i'm alive if not eh, i'll pop one song at the end of the episode and know that i love that one you can know that i love that one um a lot of weird shit going on today um with this impeachment shit by the way fucking nothing everybody's trying to create a story out of, out of nothing now um, it's not really anything going on with it at all, but there is no other news that is going on in the world that they can really latch on to. So they're like, oh, people are talking about it. Mm-hmm. There's, a, there's somebody that is unidentified in the White House that is anonymous, mm-hmm. who's writing an anonymous book. And they're saying they're a senior official in the White House and they're going to write this book. And they got paid like fucking two million dollars. And my thing is this. Mm-hmm. If you're going to write a book about being in the White House, right? You've got to say who you are. Otherwise, anybody could fucking do this. Um, I think probably when it comes out, he will, no? Or it's going to be anonymous. I don't know. I, don't think you, I, I wonder what the legalities of it are. Because Trump said he'll, uh, he'll sue, which I would imagine you could. Because, mm-hmm. like, are conversations protected or not protected? Like, Yeah, you definitely, like, I mean, you know how the DOD I do. works. And, <laughs> I, you know... I, we, we briefly if talked you really about, don't want to make any money from it though you can publish it but i yes. don't know what publisher is not ah, going to want to make money here's what the the catch is they said they're giving all the money to charity but you're not whoever gonna this make person any is money because you're gonna get sued that's what i said and i was like what the fuck is this like when we we t- we touched on this yesterday on drinking bros fake news um the Edward Snowden thing. Mm-hmm. And it was just like, oh, you know, I've got this book and the, the DOD is suing me and it's crazy and they don't want me to make any money off it or whatever. It's like, you know goddamn well if you write a book about the CIA or any form of military agency, it has to clear the Department of Defense. I know that. So when you say. Here's how I think about it where it's coming out, the DOD threatens to sue, they say, go ahead, we'll settle for a certain number. And then they just push the shit out of the book so that they can make beyond that. No, because let's say our friend Rob, right? Rob O'Neill. Yes. So well, his, he, got, he, he got his cleared. His book was cleared. Who was the one that the other guy from okay, Seal Team Six that yeah. he nine and a half million dollars advanced nine and a half, and then he got sued for with that my exact publisher. amount. Yes, with my publisher. So, but then everything else he made after that he could keep, right? I think. Or the publisher probably took because he's got to go beyond nine million. Oh, right? yeah. Which is plus yeah. legal fees and all yeah, of this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is next to impossible. Next to impossible. But uh, if you go, okay, fine, <laughs> we'll give you five million. I don't know. I'm, Do you I, know what I mean? I don't yeah. know what the, um, the idea is behind it because you're not only not making money, Snowden, you're going to be paying money in a lawsuit. And Well, the publisher is, so Snowden's going to have to pay that out of pocket. But uh, I will say this. Part of me wonders with, with that, the Snowden thing, and then the, the other guy from SEAL Team 6, not Rob O'Neill, but the other yeah. guy who wrote it, and I forget his name. Um, I don't Actually, I, I think he wrote it under a pseudonym or something. But uh, either way, uh, is there a part of me that thinks, man, the publisher knows you're getting sued. They get so many lawyers you deal with on a daily basis over there that where they like, fuck it, man. Our title is attached to everything else on Amazon. This is going to help our other book sales. So you do one of these once a year where you just willing to eat a huge lawsuit. I guess. I don't know. I don't know what the right answer is for that. But with the Snowden thing, it's just like, ugh, God, the more and more I think about that interview. Um, and I look, I love Joe Rogan and he, you have to do that interview. We would do that interview. But listening to him just pontificate on how fucking important he is in this world. Just like, Oof. you know, and I was excited for this. And I told the audience this on the last show. I was like, man, I'm going to go home and watch this tonight. Remember? Yeah, I, I did watch it and I was not stoked about it. Well, I had some notes on how they shot it. Oh, go ahead. And no, I mean, I, I would have wanted a split screen because otherwise it just seemed like Snowden. Like I was at a seminar for Snowden. Do you yes, know what I mean? that's what it felt like. So it was just like I couldn't see Rogan's reaction to it. Uh-huh. And he couldn't see Rogan. Right. Uh, and so to me it was just like a – it was Snowden. He was asking himself his own questions. I mean he would answer questions that Rogan didn't even ask him. I don't know. Yeah. It I, was all I, like he, he's, he's practiced that. 
but many again, times. You, you do that interview, you take that interview. It's it's got millions of views on YouTube. Sure, you I would just do it didn't in a, in a second. Like and, it. Uh, yeah, I just didn't like Snowden. I always like Rogan. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. He's awesome, but I, I I didn't like Snowden, and it was the first time I'd actually seen him speak on camera in front of people, and I, I did not dig it. So I know we talked about this in the last show of, hey, man, I'm going to watch this shit. But uh, I got home, you and I, we were amped. And then 20 minutes in, we were like, ah, I'm boring. Yeah. I was like 10 minutes in bored. You Five. were, yeah. I gave it an extra. I, get, I, went, I went extra. And then finally, I was like, all right. Jared on the news yesterday was like, once he started talking about the logo, I'm like, Jared, that was, was two, minutes two minutes in. in. Yeah. <laughs> he was already done. Boy. ADD Jared. Oh God. Everybody's got that friend who's just fucking ADD, man. <laughs> Where they're just like, ah, down, bored, over it. <laughs> you're ADD, like, D. Yeah. Calm down. Yeah. Calm down. Yeah. Calm down. Uh, and I also want to give you a quick update from that story I told on the, on the last episode about my, my buddies who were talking about, you know, age and single and, uh, oh, and, yes. and all that other yes. shit. Oh, yes. Yes. What happened? So my buddy says, I'm going to read off this text message here because it's here. Oh, God. He goes, you know, I just got into Columbus. Bumble account is on fire. I don't even know what the fuck Bumble is, by the way. Come on. It's the dating app where the girl initiates. Oh, oh, oh okay, okay. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Um, and then he's sending pictures of these people, um, these girls that are on Bumble, you know, sure. whatever. And he's just like, whoa, this is, this is seriously depressing. And I was like, yeah. Why? Yeah. Um, I, I'm not going to show this on camera because this is a human. Uh, this, Are we talking I, about this? Is somebody girls, matched with? I, and forgive me. We've been you and I have been together for eight years at this point, married for six. Oh, I have God. not had to use a dating app. I know. Me too. <laughs> Don't worry about it. It's my last it's show. It's your yeah. last show. We can say all the things, we right? Want, I get a monster insurance policy. You guys are gonna be fine forever. Um, yeah. Uh, but good. I did not enter the world of. No, I App never dating, did. right? Um, I never did. I uh, I went on a couple with friend that did a uh, plenty of fish. That's uh -huh. more of the like you bring your friends with you. So I've gone with friends to their dates, gotcha. and was just like, oh god, I can't do this. I've never done it because it just seemed like such a nightmare. Okay, so I'm going to ask you this before I show the picture. Um, do you match with somebody because of your interest, or is it a swipe thing with Bumble? Like, how does that work? Or the girl gets to pick you? The girl gets to. Um, Do you match up on certain interests? Is it purely looks? Like, what is the what's the situation? You match with that? up on certain interests. I think that the girl you can both pick each other, but the girl has to be the first one to initiate it to say something. Okay, so I'm gonna. Right? I'm gonna are, are we correct? Maybe Alec knows. This Alec, are you on Bumble or any of the dating apps? It's only Tinder. No, I, people, girls are using this Bumble. Using, I guess. Bumble, but I, I mean. Oh, in college it's Tinder. Yeah, oh, I forgot. So Bumble Alex in is college. maybe for adults. For an older, there we go. An older guy, sense. which is someone that we're talking about, right? I mean, he's older. Glad you're back, Alec. We need that fucking insight we right there, brother. We need that young mind, yeah, friend. Dude. We need that young college mind. What are you, 21, Alec? 21. Yeah, it's yeah, 21. So that's all right. Perfect. So it's Tinder in college, right? Sure. We so didn't have Tinder any of this for the shit. younger folks. Bumble, if you're trying to be, um respectful yeah. to women we, and we had it match. hard alec i had to i had to walk uphill all the way to the bar and go hit on women and try to bring them home now you just get to look at pictures all day i know um so i'm going to show you this jesse behind the album here this is who one of my best friends <laughs> matched with and he goes man this is this is bad yeah, 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 yeah. I don't want to. I don't want to show this because, like, I'm sure this person's a play person. That's who Chris matched with, and I was like, huh? "Why are you saying his name?" Uh, because there's a million Chris's in the world. It doesn't fucking matter. I'm friends with like 30 Chris's. I, f I, I feel like there's enough Chris's in the world. It's like, yeah, all right, cool. You know. So your Chris, your friend Chris, that just flew into stop, Columbus. Stop, 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 stop. That is. Yo. You said all of this. You said all of this Did on I? air. You said he just flew into Columbus, yes. Chris. Okay. Single. No need to rehash it. Maybe people forgot <laughs> Older, about it. Older. I know I forgot about it. On Bumble. Put the pieces nope. together, everyone. Do he's not. He's not brown skin, so he's not that one. Do not do that. He's not um, a brown I've skin. I've had a lot one. of meds. I'm trying to ask you a, a question in a gentle manner, and mm. now what you are slamming it home in my face. No, you actually know a couple different Chris's with that I do. description, but. I do. 
And I love the person that you're talking about. So do I. And he was like, man. So he flew in last night. Mm -hmm. And that was who he matched with when he got off the, the and plane. And I will say other men his age, yeah. that would be a perfect match. But I'm going to say something nice about Chris. He's keeping it tight and he's keeping it right. Yes. And he is, you know, he's a fun guy. So we have. Not ready. We, we, to... all, we all have friends who are afraid of father time, right? Um, right? I'm one of them. I, look, I try to keep my I shit up. we all are. No. There is, uh, look, I have a lot of friends who are definitely not afraid of like, eh, well, this is who I am. I'm married now. I got kids. Ugh, I envy. So do I. I envy. If they're happy. If the wives are happy about it and vice versa. Um, is anybody? I don't know. Um, Great question. So anyway, <laughs> so anyways, the death episode. Um, so w what is your what is your point with that? My point is this: at that age, right, mm -hmm. keeping it tight, keeping it right, whatever, and then this is what you are faced with. Mm -hmm. Man, at that point, I don't know. I would start to feel real depressed about that. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Yeah, that's my options. But he wants to be a da he wants to be a daddy. He doesn't want to be a dad though, right? Oh man, since we're saying literally anything we want today, because I I just don't care. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you I, I got a late night text from my, my brown skin friend. Um, oh, my was, buddy, I love him. What's so, going on with him? He was out on a date last night. He's at uh, one of a nice restaurant. Uh, one of a friend of ours from a restaurant. You've you know the, this friend. Um, Have I been to the restaurant? Yes, and you've he's got many throughout the city, mm -hmm. and uh, in Columbus. And uh, mm -hmm. he goes, "Hey man, so I'm I'm with his date smoking a hot girl last night. Sure. And Chase Young, who is our best player for Ohio State, mm -hmm. but, like he's the very best in the business. He is currently projected to go number two in the NFL draft. He is a walking." worth of 45 million right now is just long. all he has to do is stay healthy and mm -hmm. uh just get to the draft mm -hmm. in in april mm -hmm. walked by the table last night and said what's up to his girl you know that he was with or whatever right and uh i was like well what'd you do and he was like well you know it made me feel good about myself that i was with a hot enough girl that chase young thought you know right she was hot and i was right. like cool but did you offer her up to him because we have a huge game tomorrow and I want Chase Young to be as happy as he possibly can. So just know, if he has a shitty game and we lose, I'm going to burn down your fucking house, yeah, dude, because you should have volunteered as tribute for the rest of Buckeye Nation that Chase Young was happy, you know? He was not pleased with that comment. It's a problematic story. Uh, he was not pleased story. with that comment. That's a problematic story. No, But I, I'll let it go. Uh, it's we'll not, just let it It's go. not a story, and I'll tell you why. Because the girl, the girl gave him a heads up back. Like, uh, you know, mm -hmm. like, hey, it's... Mm -hmm. And that's the thing, man. If you have a mega star athlete who walks into a restaurant anywhere in the United States, chances are the mega star athlete wins that one, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You're just like, eh, yeah, all right, I get it. You yeah. Know? If my lady left me for Kobe or something, I'd be like, well, fuck. Yeah. I've told the Matt Dillon story. He walked over to the table and took every girl at the table and just... That's how did you get like, like to sit at a better table with me? All three girls, we were on a triple date, <sighs> got up and walked. I, I mean, literally just walked over to his table and then just left three dudes <sighs> sitting in our table alone. And they had ordered drinks and we already had to pay for everything. And I was just like, I, I, I literally looked at it. I was like, ah, I get it. I get it. It's Matt Dillon in his prime. In his prime. Where's he been? You know, it's a great question uh, because I still think he's a good actor, man. And, uh, I don't know what he's doing. I know he tried to pop on a TV show on Fox a, a few years ago, but he's also rich enough that it really doesn't matter. So mm. I, I find it interesting that him and Cameron Diaz, because they were together for years and years and years and years and years. Mm -hmm. They didn't get married. I don't know what happened. I think Matt Dillon just didn't want to, like he's that no. eternal single guy, mm -hmm. right? And she disappeared too. She was like gone and she was like, look, I, I want to, be married and I don't want to deal with this shit anymore, I guess. So Yeah, she's like, like retired and making poop books. I'm sorry? Books about poop. What is that? Some kind of health book, whatever, about our poop or something. Let me look it Great. up. But that's what she's been up to. Just the classic tale of a yeah. hot actress that leaves the business wow. to make a poop book. She did show, there, there was a picture of her though. She showed up the other day. 
Jennifer, she's looking good. At uh, Jennifer Lawrence's wedding. Oh, that's right. That J-Log was a, I married. That was a sad day for you, huh? It was our anniversary. And I'm like, why are you so sad? Hmm. She got married on the same day as we did? Yeah. That's hilarious. Did we talk about that? <laughs> yeah, we did. Boy. And I go, I'm sorry, like kind of joking for you to be like, no, babe, I love you. Don't worry about it. And all you said was, won't last. Nah, it won't. I'll it won't get last. another chance, basically, is what no. you're saying. I, I'm not saying that at all. I, <laughs> it, it, here's the thing with that, that whole I t- I, t- I teed you up. up and once, you, you... once she uh, went off the political, I'm going to take, what, two years off or whatever it is to mm. learn politics, essentially. Oh, yeah, to learn about. I was like, yeah, eh, uh, that, that, that ship has sailed. Like, that, that's, you know, you're already done with life at that point. Yeah. She got famous young, and then now she wants to learn about herself. Yeah. Blah. You know? Yeah, but Godspeed. Yeah, Godspeed. See you later. Godspeed. Uh, Jabes, I don't, I don't have any revolutionary figure today, um, except for, no, nah, that's not true. That's not true. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, mean, I, I literally, I was just going to look that up. Who invented? What? NyQuil. NyQuil. Who oh. invented that? Because I've been living off of it, and you should be praised for all that you do. Uh, Lunsford Richardson. Um, yeah, of course. A pharmacist in Greensboro, North Carolina. There we go. All right. North Carolina creates and sells 21 patent medicines under the Vicks name um, since the 1890s. You know what's funny, man? You drink this shit, you really do feel like you're drinking something from the 1890s where it's like, I feel like a wagon pulled up. <laughs> And you just it should get be something like out an of the old back. timey, yeah. like hey. apothecary. God. So here's the standard. Uh, they're not a sponsor, but I wish they were. Uh, here's the standard Dayquil bottle, right? Because I got another show today. I'm wondering how that's going to go. Um, <laughs> not good. Probably. probably not great at all. It's a super serious show. Yeah. Um, Oops. <laughs> You're going to be fucking Anyways, loops, if you look at this dude. bottle, right? Uh, eh, nothing flashy, right? N- nothing cool. If you made this, though, into a... Where's the fucking... Do we have the... Yeah, there we go. We have these old, like, straight razors bottles. Because that's what I love about Ooh, this shit, watch right? Watch out. Yeah, whatever. Like, like, let's say you made it in the, the old-timey thing of these straight razors yeah, bottles yeah, yeah. or whatever, right? No, and I'm you're saying like, oh, like a shit. glass. Like, I'm saying an old apothecary type this is, of just very simple... This looks like you're going to die on the straight razors. Yeah. Thing. Like, Ooh, you're going to die if you don't take this. Or you might die if you take it. It's right? either way, but you should be taking it. That's what I feel about... Uh, Dayquil and NyQuil, they should change their uh, bottling and their packaging. Go back to the 1890s where it's you're buying it out of a, a snake skin, snake oil salesman mm-hmm. out of the back of a wagon. Oh, hey, so you're feeling sick, you're feeling down, this will get your juices running, you'll feel great in fucking no time, which is not true. Um, you'll sleep and until someone wakes you up, uh, basically shoving you directly into the mattress. I would then, use Dayquil, though. There's something in there, even if you aren't sick, that kind of keeps you... Alert. Alert. I know when I used to have to do a clopin at the bar. Yeah. A close and an open, yeah. Close to open, so yeah. you get off at 2, and then you get back there at mm-hmm. 8. Not sure how you're going to sleep or anything in between there, so you don't. Nah. And we would take shots of Dayquil, and then shots of shots, but... Yeah. And, and it would kind of kinda like... You know, it's a little I, bit like a yeah. Throw a throw a shot of Jaeger down with uh, Nyquil. Ooh, Nyquil. Yeah, I would go Dayquil. But it. No, you go Nyquil you unless you oh. that'll put you out. Oh sure, sure, That'd sure. Be the sure. hammer, the hammer of death is what we call that. Uh, Jabes, don't know what we talked about for however long this was, but I love you. Yeah, I want you to know that. Oh, kids are loved. Life I'll let them know that, uh, is, that uh, you lived the life you wanted to live, and I'll let them know when I get home. Appreciate it. Um, and you died the way you wanted to die. Yeah. And that was... Um, you bet. You bet. Big insurance policy. You'll come back to this. James will be sitting in a gold throne mm-hmm. um, eating... Oh, no, guys. I won't be bologna here. Bologna sandwiches. If I have money, I would not be here. <laughs> so this has been fun, and I have appreciated love, you know, talking to you and meeting all of your <laughs> sweet little faces. I will not be back if I even get a tiny bit more money than I have now. Yeah. I'm gone. You betcha. You betcha. <laughs> For Jesse Wiseman, a.k.a. The Jables, I'm Ross Patterson. This is the end, beautiful friends, the end. No, Kanye. For the audio show, we're going to throw Salah on here by Kanye West. Last song he ever wanted to hear. Last song I ever wanted to hear. Crank this up at a max level. If if you don't want to 
fucking run through a goddamn wall after this, you're not alive. Uh, Good night, everyone.